My beginnings were really in performance. When I was a teenager, I started writing plays and putting them on, like, sort of punk rock, all-ages clubs, just because that's what was available to me. And also, I was kind of resolutely uninterested in in being any kind of apprentice or anything that didn't feel real. So just to clarify, I never was a musician. Some people think I was. But I went on to move more into performance rather than straight plays. And those performances were recorded onto CDs. So I think some people think those CDs are music, but they're really more like radio plays. And at the same time, I performed and made short movies for 10 years before I had the idea to start writing a longer movie, a screenplay. And around the same time, I started wanting to write short stories. So I think it was just kind of a general interest in narrative at that point. And that was around 2000. I kind of had all the tools. My performance work was very dialogue-driven and... I acted out all the parts. So a lot of those early stories had a lot of dialogue in them. Often I began with dialogue. This first book of short stories is really the first things I've ever written. And in a sense, if it was put into chronological order, you could probably watch me teaching myself how to write. I don't have a favorite story in the collection per se, but I think probably when I first sold the book, I was sure that all the earlier stories, which is for the most part the shorter stories, I was sure that they were better and that I had kind of lost my magic and and was just merely trying to fill out pages near the end. Although now looking back, I realized I had kind of gained some muscles over time and the longer stories, particularly the last one, which was pretty much the last story I wrote, I am attempting more, and I wouldn't say that's my favorite, but I guess it gives me a little hope that I might be able to write something longer, you know? The fact that I was able to kind of develop characters so long over such a long period of time in their lives, that that one's called uh, How to Tell Stories to Children. How to Tell Stories to Children begins with a man and a woman, and you think maybe the story is going to be about the sort of unrequited love, which a lot of the stories are between this man and woman. I think I thought that when I started writing it myself, right around that same time, my nephew was born. And I was holding him a lot, sitting in this room, this baby room slash office in my brother's house, kind of looking at all the baby things they'd bought, including a row of clowns that spelled his name Leo. God, I hadn't even thought about that. His name's Leo, and the girl in the story is named Lion. (laughs) That girl had nothing to do with my nephew. It was just that a baby had entered my life, and so I I guess a baby entered this story and then, you know, took on a story I had in me to tell. I can't always trace it back to personal experience. There's always some little thing that I've borrowed, although it's unusual that it's something so big. Usually it's the seemingly insignificant detail that I've stolen often. There's a couple people in my life. My mom is one of them, and I have a friend who's another one who just details seem to fall off them, (laughs) and I'm just sort of walking behind gathering them for my stories. Just little things, like my mom was in an earthquake preparedness group, which she would keep me updated on. So, you know, I think that made its way into majesty. I also tagged along with her to a sewing class she was in where they were sewing robes. That was in 10 True Things. So there are these little details, but, you know, none of these stories are about my mom. I just like these details from her life. Writing in first person or that kind of confessional, I guess it seems, style, I wasn't that conscious of it. I think I feel a little silly when I'm writing something that seems super story-like, that's like she had a strange feeling when she stepped out of bed that morning. There's something about that that I'll feel like I'm writing a story, and I I never want to feel like that. 
I guess that's how I got into the first person, although um, I imagine I could write in another person <laughs> if I thought about it. It's literally what happens, I guess, when I just don't think too hard about it and start writing. And I think that comes maybe a little bit from acting because I'm trying to be these people as I'm writing. I'm not just watching them and thinking she. You know, I'm trying to feel what it feels like to be her and think I. <laughs>